OK, let's turn our attention, shall we, to the Women's Nation League. England once again faced Belgium, but this time at the Den Drief Stadion. There we go. Anton Tolui has been... There he is. Look at a huge size Anton Tolui. Fantastic. He's <laughs> uh, been speaking to Serena Wiegmann and watching the players in training. Anton, first up, England got the vital three points, didn't they, on, on Friday? Um, but how concerning was it they didn't take all the chances they had? All the chances. England had 23 shots during that game in Leicester against Belgium on Friday night. And Serena Wiegmann, well, that's why I asked her just a few minutes ago. I was like, look, are you actually happy with how your team's playing right now? She said, yes, really, I really am. But at the same time, she wants that ruthlessness. She wants England to be able to score more goals. She wants to see a little bit more attacking now and a little bit more creativity from this England team because it's an England team stacked with talent, isn't it, in the, in the forward line. You've got Lauren Hemp, who has been in very good form for England, but then you've also got Chloe Kelly, Alessi Russo and Rachel Daly, who's one of the players listed for the Ballon d'Or tonight. So England have got attacking talent. I suppose it's just how they unlock that. And that's, I think that is a little bit of a concern going into this game. George, just Stanway telling us earlier, all England need to do is just get that ball over the line and they'll start to feel a lot better. Sue, I don't know what you think, but is it a case of finding the right personnel or is it just about tweaking the system maybe? Well, I think going into that game, I was wondering how they were going to play. Were they going to play with a, a back four, a back three? Um, but yeah, you, you look at the, the quality, like you said, that they've got in those forward areas, that the positive is that they are creating those opportunities. It is just about being a little bit more ruthless or, or clinical in that, that final third. But there was always going to be some sort of a hangover from the World Cup. I think when you go all the way to a final, you lose that final. Physically, emotionally, that's going to have a bit of an impact. I think not having Lauren James there, we know that the qualities that, that she has to be able to just produce a, a moment of brilliance. But we have got a very good squad, a very attack-minded squad, not just in the forward areas, the midfield areas, the, the full-backs. And, and I think that's a, a huge positive. So it will come. I'm not worried. Um, so hopefully you're not. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and Anton, <laughs> how much is there a feeling that they're, they're over-reliant on Mary Earps right now? Well, I think undoubtedly. We all, we've all got used to Mary Earps' excellence, haven't we, for England, for Manchester United. Yet again, she was needed on Friday night to perform some fantastic saves. I don't know about you, Rob, Sue, but following England sort of over the last few years, men and women, I've never known a goalkeeper to get such a star sort of, sort of reaction as Mary Earps is getting right now. The fans chanting her name every time she touched the ball. And let's say every time she touched the ball, England's game against Scotland in Sunderland as well. She is sort of not just a leader on the pitch, not just one of England's best players, but also just seen as an absolute star around this England team. The fans have really taken to Mary Earps over the last couple months. It's really interesting to see as well. So I think it is, it is fascinating because, yeah, England know they can rely on their number one. They don't want to have to. And I think the fact that they're changing their defence now and bringing the likes of Neve Charles in to try to sort of change things a little bit. Actually, watching training a little bit earlier, the first thing that Serena Wiegmann did when the players come out was take Neve Charles to the side, have a chat with her. Looks like she may well be the sort of England's new left back. So I think England's defence, Mary Earps and how it shapes up is something really to watch for in the next sort of few days and the next few matches. Yeah, well, I, th I think Mary Earps is such a big character, like you say, on and off the field. And the fans absolutely love her. I think the way that, that she speaks, the way that she portrays herself off the field in those interviews, obviously the, the goalkeeper shirt, I think, was, was, was brilliant in terms of she come out and spoke about that. And then I think they, they were sold out within 24 hours, weren't they? So that was, that was huge. And it's not just that. It's obviously a performance is on the field. And I think when you need somebody to step up, she might not have anything to do for large periods of the game, but she's able to, to keep focused and, and pull off those real important saves. So, yeah, she's, she's a confident young player that's just got better and better as, as the, the seasons have gone on. And, and she is, she's an absolute superstar. Yeah, Anton, uh, talk about the impact Kira Walsh has had on her return. Yeah, just an exceptionally calming influence, I think, on this England team. There are very few players on the planet that can do what Kira Walsh can do. And you think you saw that 
on Friday night against Belgium, and I think you'll see that going forward. England really missed Kira Walsh, especially against the Netherlands, when England got overrun in that centre midfield. And I think it's just a huge relief. You heard from Georgia Stanway a little bit earlier talking about how she wants to chip in with more goals, how players around the team have to take a little bit more sort of attacking responsibility. And I think that a huge part of that is having Kira Walsh back. She, she gives players more freedom to play because they know she will be there doing the responsible stuff behind her. So, yeah, having Kira Walsh back, I think, is huge for England. And I don't know about you, Steve, but I really think they missed her. Oh, absolutely. And she's probably a player that, that doesn't always get the headlines, but she's one that is so important in that side in terms of protecting the back line, her intelligence of, of play and, and positioning. But when she's on the ball, the quality that she has, and, and like you say, she affects those players around. It gives the freedom to those midfielders to, to get further forward. And yeah, without Kira Walsh, you can see that England are a, a different side. So it's brilliant to have her back fit. Yeah, one to both of you. Let, let's go with you first, Anton. Frank Kirby, ready for a full 90 minutes. Yeah, according to Serena Wiegmann, everyone's fit, which means Frank Kirby is fit. Look, she's only started one game in WSL for, what, sort of eight months, but we're just watching training the last sort of few, well, last week, really. Frank Kirby is one of the first players out there, always trotting around, just so comfortable with the ball. If even in training, you see if someone pings a long ball, her first touch is just effortless it's so good to watch and you just think I mean again hearing from the players they're so happy to have Fran Kirby back because she offers sort of calmness on the ball she can create chances out of nothing and she can chip in with goals herself I think everybody within this England camp wants to see Fran Kirby do well but whether she's quite ready for a full 90 at this point I think we'll, well it, it must be really tempting for Serena Wiegmann to throw her in right now but I'm not sure whether she will do yet to be honest I just think you've got to look after her. You know, I think she's had a, a long period of time off. So, yes, of course, that the quality that she provides, the, the ability that she has on the pitch with no Lauren James, you've got her to fit in there and, and be that, that spark in the, in the middle of the park. But I just think because she has been out, you want her fit, injury-free, illness-free, just be available for Chelsea and for, for England moving forward. So I think protect her, play her as many minutes as the, you know, the, the sports scientists and the, the medical team say is, is right. But of course, it, it would be quite tempting to, to give her the 90 minutes because of the, the quality that, that she provides. But I just think look after her. Anton, thank you as always. There we go, Anton to Louis there.